Hi, in the video series NA01, I looked at the performance of a Windows 2003 file server and I was analyzing the server's response times using Wireshark and Excel. On this occasion, I'm going to repeat the same analysis, but this time I have a Windows 2008 file server and the communication between my PC and the file server is using the uh, file access protocol SMB2, a later version of SMB. Now what happened was my PC is connected to the file server via a VPN over the internet and I opened the PDF which was stored on the file server from the PC and it took about 50 seconds or more to load. It's quite large, it's about 970k. My, the purpose of doing this analysis is to find out what happened during that time. So let's talk about a bit more in detail about the scenario. So what I did was uh, I set up a ping marker in a command box and I used a ping length of 101 bytes so that I could uh, easily distinguish this from perhaps other pings that hit the file server from management systems. So I had that all ready to go. Then I started Wireshark and I navigated to the file server folder which held the uh, PDF. The PDF was called Network Trace Analysis Strategies White Paper PDF. The name you see, see there on the screen. Then I sent my first ping, the ping with a ping length of 101 bytes. Then I double clicked on the PDF document in Windows Explorer. Acrobat Reader started after a short period. Then after a, a, a slightly longer period, the document was rendered in the window of Acrobat Reader. And at that point, I sent ping 102. So I sent another ping with a length of 102 bytes. Um, I was a bit tardy in the way I sent that last ping, so it's slightly later than perhaps I should have sent it. But I sent the uh, ping and then I stopped the trace. One thing I, I didn't point out, the Wireshark capture software, the network analyzer capture software was running actually on the file server, as you can see in this diagram. So that's how we started and uh, then I saved the trace and we're going to have a look at that trace. So here is the trace. There are other things going on on this file server. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is filter it so that we just get the TCP session that interests us. and. I guess what we should start with actually is looking for the, the pings to make sure they're there. So here's the first ping, that's 101. So that's at frame 48. You can see it's clearly distinguishable by the length of 101 bytes. And if we just look again, we can see later at this frame number 1739, we have another ping of 102 bytes. So that looks good. Now I'll go back to the top of the trace file and I want to check which session contains the data that I'm interested in. Now I'm going to search by string and I'm going to search for the, the words that make up the, the PDF network trace. Look for, for those words. Uh, I'm probably going to find it in the packet list, probably find it in the packet details, but as is the way I do these things, I usually look for packet bytes. This is slightly overkill looking for packet bytes because normally I would make sure I do that if I'm looking for the actual content in the payload of the packet. But in this case, the word network trace is, is very likely to be in the packet details and quite likely to be in the packet list, but we're going to go with this anyway. So we see here that we have a create request. Now in SMB terms, a create request is what's used to open a file. And 
you can see actually from the decode here. So this is the SMB decode, SMB2 header decode. We come down here, we can see we've got a create request. We can see that just like in SMB1, we use create to open an existing file, but we use it with this special disposition that says if it exists, open it else fail. And we can see that here's the PDF that we were trying to open. So with that in mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow that TCP session. So we do a follow TCP stream. As with the NA01 video, I'm not interested in TCP control messages. I'm just interested in process to process communication. So I'm going to use a TCP length of greater than zero. Now I, I didn't point this out last time, but actually it's a bit safer to specify one because in theory, um, I'm alive packets, these probe packets that you get in TCP, they have a length of one and you can pick those up if you don't filter. In SMB, I'm definitely going to have a payload greater than one. Um, so I'm going to uh, specify a TCP length of one. So let's apply that. So that drops some things out. Now, I actually would rather like to see my markers in my uh, resulting trace because I'm going to export this eventually to uh, Excel. So let's specify that. And now we still should have our ICMP markers in the trace. No packet. Well, that's because I search by string. So let's do it by display filter as I should have. And there's our ping. 102 bytes. And there's our 101 byte ping. So let's have a look at the SMB headers. Now with SMB1 we had, uh, you may remember we had tree ID, process ID, user ID and multiplex ID. We don't have quite the same things anymore. Now what we have is session ID, tree ID, process ID and command sequence number. So those are the four values that I'm concerned about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add those as a column into the uh, summary. If you're not familiar with doing this, please go and view the NA01 video because it, it we we cover that in in that sec in that uh, video series. So that gives us all the things that we actually want. As in NA01, I have two additional columns added into my Wireshark summary. I have source port and I have destination port. Both unresolved because I want to just see the numbers because that's much more easy to manipulate in um, once we get it into Excel. That gives us all the data we need. Now all we have to do is export it. So let's go on and export. So file, export to a file. I just want the filtered packet, so I say displayed. I only want the summary line. I want it as a CSV. And I'm going to call it slow SMB2. But here's something different to what I did last time. Uh, in the NA01 video. This time I'm going to specify a file extension of text. Okay, so that's that exported. Now the things I wanted to show you before we move away from here, because we'll see these in the uh, Excel um, spreadsheet. If you look, for example, just here, we have two SMB messages within one TCP packet. So we have an SMB header there. 
the request create request and then we have another SMB header and this time the command is IO control now in theory you could do this in SMB1 because it had this uh, command and X extension but you didn't see it very often but you see it's much more prevalent in SMB2 and in fact um, we I know we've got occasions in here where we have um, three commands okay just here so there we have three SMB messages in one TCP packet each message has got a command sequence number an individual command sequence number so we can identify the individual messages but I'll explain what we're going to do about that once we get it into um, Excel this one's a bit strange because it has this command sequence number of minus one minus one commands with a sequence number I can I'm fairly certain that will be an op lock break so if you know about opportunistic locking you'll know yeah there we go break response op lock um, so this is uh, a way of signaling to a, a server being able to signal to a client that it must um, flush all the uh, all the blocks of data that it has associated with this particular file in its cache so opportunistic locking is all about cache control I haven't got time to go into it in this video but that's what we have there so just to explain that minus one value there okay I think we're about done so in the next video I'll deal with um, processing the pre-processing the data preparing it for analysis